like in real life, and then I have some handouts for medical facilities and for pa patient transport, like with, on the ambulance and stuff like that coming in. Um, first on the history, well, this is a cool, this is a microscopic close-up of a bed bug. So you can see their proboscis, their beak, in which they, that's where they yeah. bite and get the blood. Uh, yeah, the immatures are very, very small. They're lighter in color, and each time they have to have a blood meal before they molt into the next, and they go through five molts. And then the adult is a lot darker in color. And the eggs are pretty much uh, like a speck of dust. They're a little harder to see, and they are glued onto things, so they're not just laid. They actually are attached to wherever they lay. And then the old saying, <laughs> yeah, it's been around for for many years. My dad used to say that all the time. And there's a there's all five stages. Well, the of the instar and then the adult. So you have the egg, the five stages, and the adult. So each shed, they do have to have a blood meal, and they get darker as they get older. And this is kind of gives you the whole life cycle, just with the blood meal. And the whole stage probably takes uh, about a month and a half from egg to adult. And the uh, female can lay anywhere from one, two, to five eggs a day. Oh. And there's going to be a male involved, though? Yeah. Okay. And they uh, both have to have a blood meal before they mate. And then they, after that, they can go a couple days to a few weeks before they'll mate again. But they do the traumatic insemination where the, the male just punctures into her side, so that's part of where some of the, the fecal and blood that you'll see is from the mating also that you'll see on the mattresses. This is just showing different stages and so you can know what to look for. This is one before and then after blood meal. They really get engorged and then you can see the blood, you know. Quite a few just pictures just to let you know. They look like. So there's the adult. That's how engorged they get from the wow. beginning till the finish of the feeding. How long does it take them to fill up like that? Um, not very long, just a few minutes. And then this is just all different stages and some of their molts. So you can tell where the it's just the skin and nothing. They do shed. You'll see lots of that if it's a very heavy infestation, and then you'll see the blood spots, the fecal matter. A lot of these are just the pictures of, and that's just the shed, one of the sheds, the molts, and that's what it looks like. Yeah. Eggs. Yeah. And there they are with the eggs, and there's a molt up there, but that's just, you know, like in a little break in the... They'll get into any little crack and crevice. They usually just feed at night, um, and then during the day they go and hide. So you don't see them as much during the day. And this was, they came over, they started, they've been back in ancient Greece. Aristotle's talked about them in a lot of his writings and stuff. So they've been around for years, and they, uh, the sailing ships a lot of times were just overran with them that they wouldn't let passengers bring on any of their bedding anymore when they were traveling over. And that's where it all started here in the U.S. Um, it was just on all their coming over on the sailing ships. Uh, World War II was very bad. Um, between the wars they would just be on the, all the bunkers. and. Um, See, they were very abundant um, for the U.S. Army, and families and soldiers were being uh, feasted upon in their bunks. And they actually contacted representatives in Congress for a solution because it was so bad on the bases. Uh, they finally were able to get fumigation, and that's when DDT was discovered. Mm -hmm. So that's why we had the decline was because of DT, DDT was actually took care of it, and that's why we hadn't had bed bugs for a while now until the past five, ten years. And this is just some of the, where they were finding them in all the barracks and everything. It was a huge issue. They even had out posters and books for everybody there on the base to give them an idea of what was 
some of the old posters are pretty funny. Then when DDT, they actually came out with a wallpaper that was sprayed with it for your children's room. Oh. And it would last up to uh, six months. You wouldn't well, have to be retreated. <laughs> something going on. Oh. But that's why, yeah, that's why they had the decrease in it. And then since DDT was banned in the 70s, then we've had the resurgence of it, of bed bugs coming back. Um, they're very similar to bat bugs, but bat bugs only feed on bats. So the difference is just the hairs on the side of the pronotums and then their eyes are different under the microscope. You can really only tell microscopically. And there's one on the bat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there they are microscopically. You can just see the difference in the hairs mm -hmm. here and then their eyes, the way they show up under a microscope. But more than likely, if it's in a residence, it's going to be a bed bug. So this is just a little, they, they only feed at night and anywhere from one to five eggs a day. And then seven to ten days, the eggs will hatch after being deposited. And development from egg hatch to adult takes one and a half to two months. Uh, but it's usually environmental conditions can change that, you know, <coughs> shorter or longer in food availability. Um, they don't seek a blood meal every day. They can go several days to a week or more. And they're believed to be inactive between blood meals where they hide. And they're not limited to bedroom. They'll go anywhere. They'll floor, ceiling. They can climb anything and go anywhere. And they can survive several months even without a blood meal. And this is the eggs and the, the fecal matter on close-up view. And that's what you can kind of look for. You'll see, I'll have some mattress pictures and stuff, but these, a lot of times at the carpet line, baseboards is where they like to hide out because they can get down right between the carpet and hide out all day there. And there they are, like some of the wood and split, and they get up behind there. Then that's a back of the picture frame with a bunch of eggs stuck to it. Screw holes on furniture are a big spot where they hide. We find them a lot in there. <coughs> Most of these are just some pictures. There's a mattress right there, the seams. So we don't have any bed bugs in the picture, but that's what they leave behind, the smears and the stains. So that's what to look for, and it's usually all along the seams. That's where most of the time it's going to be. You can see you can, they're really only in the seam areas. They don't, you'll find it every once in a while out, but most of the time they're where they can hide, somewhere close where they can hide. They get their blood meal and go back. There's a picture of the a bite and the irritation. Typically with bed bugs, um, they bite more in a line. They're not very, they're not sporadic unless it's a really bad infestation. But you can see where they kind of just stay along the same area. So, <clears throat> for instance, how would you tell the difference between somebody who was living with fleas versus somebody who's living with bed bugs? Um, the flea bites, yeah, they're typically going to be all over. The bed bugs, like, similar in a line, and okay. the flea bites to me are usually smaller, and they'll go away a lot quicker. Even with the bed bugs, some people won't have a reaction to them at all. Some people will, and it will be a week. It can be up to a week before they'll even have. So you're talking like a lesion, like maybe like this? Yeah, they're a little bit bigger, more swollen. Yeah, that's what I'm looking. It almost looks like pustules down there. Yeah. That's how the reaction. <clears throat> yeah, and then, yeah, it just depends on the people. Some people will have, like 30% of people have no reaction to them whatsoever. <coughs> so it's just... Is that one bug going along that line, or is yeah. it multiple bugs? I think that one's one on there. The s bottom one, I think that's more than one. Yeah. I think it's hard to know which yeah, one's just one. one. And, yeah. 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 <laughs> And then, that, like I was talking before, a lot of the issues are coming from discarded furniture. 
people are throwing them out and other people are bringing them into their house. There's a reason they're discarded. Yeah. <laughs> Leave them there. Yeah. Them. Let them burn. That's what most cars even is buying them secondhand. Traveling's a big one too. If you travel a lot, I personally don't take my suitcase directly in the room. I take it in. I put it in the bathtub because they're not going to be in there. And then I inspect the bed. The biggest one is the headboards, and they come right off. Usually they pull straight up. I inspect that. Inspect all the mattresses before I even bring it in to the room. I have friends who sleep in like a the little silk, um, <laughs> like a sack. Sack. Yes. <laughs> yes. You won't. She won't sleep in. Yeah, because we just had a rooms. family the other day, we and he down. travels all the time, and that's what happened. He took a suitcase out. He set it next to the bed and flipped it open, and by the time he got home, he brought him, brought him home, and they just threw out the suitcase. They threw out everything when he got home. So yeah, I don't even take mine into there. I it definitely don't use the stand. Because if people have them and they're using that, they're in that stand. So I would, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't like hotels. <laughs> make a little paranoid. Ew, ew. Uh, yeah, as of recently, the increase in it has been international travel. Because um, over in the, uh, other countries, they don't have as much um, it doesn't seem to bother them as much, you know, it's more of a natural, and they don't use the pesticide as often to, they've just been used to it because it never quite, life, yeah, it yeah. never quite went away over there like it did in the U.S. So, and then, you know, they're traveling all to get together and then moving, you know, when you move and you take all your stuff with you. So that's, most of it is just that and lack of public awareness. A lot of people don't know what they are, don't know anything about it, they've just, they've always had them there. <laughs> and this is just saying traveling and checking, just getting the practice of examining everything. Um, this will go into, this is just how to get rid of them. He, uh, hot water dryer for 30 minutes on medium, we'll get, we'll kill them. Because that's what, we do the heat treatments. Um, mattress encasements are a good thing because then they can't get into the seams. Keeps it, they'll still get into the linens, but they can't get into the mattresses or on the mattresses. So encasements are a good one. These climb ups make it so they can't get to the furniture to climb up because they can't jump, they can't fly. So, so just like that down in the leg. Yeah. And then these are just this like the, this is the exact heat trailer we use for ours. And that's how we just run the tubes up to the room. These are kind of cool just to show you the, how hot they get. You can see the one room. And then these are our charts so we know we hit about 120 and then we run for two and a half hours, anywhere from 120 to 160. Once it hits 120, then we start the time. The big issue is clutter. People, you got to move everything out. <coughs> That's mainly all those. For um, <coughs> the medical facilities, uh, if you see them, you don't have to overreact. You know, it's most people don't have them. It's not because you're dirty. It's they're hitchhikers. They're everywhere now. So it's just you know we've had libraries. We've had you know kids come in backpacks. We've had schools that we've had to treat. It's just a matter of they just get in your stuff and hitchhike and find their way. Um, Try not to, I mean, I, I think we've sold you guys some Sterifab, which is a on contact. You can spray immediately if you see them. Um, other than that, I wouldn't use any other control methods, you know, unless we need to know if we're going to come in and treat what's been used in there. Um, the, um, I, I don't know if you, do you guys have like a written bed bug plan, what you guys follow? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's like the number one and make sure everybody's on the same page communication wise. Um, most of it is just awareness, knowing what you're looking for. Here's the samples if you guys have never seen one. And if you guys do think you have a bed bug in a room, we ask that you get a sample and put it in a container that way. Because it could possibly be yeah, a tick or clover mite, something completely different. And that way when we get here we know exactly what we're dealing with.